time for another Coffee with Kilroy, or what I sometimes like to call beverage in a book. My beverage, well, what do you think it is? Ah, good morning coffee. The book today is Dreaded Flags, Naval Conflict in the Age of Piracy, 1568 to 1720. This is a game book or a war game book, uh, which uh, if you've been following my channel, I've covered many of these or many types, different types of game books and war game books. But basically, uh, a war game book is a war game in a book. <laughs> so uh, a lot of times there's the need to do... Uh, to do it yourself, you know, to pull, to cut out counters or to pull out maps or maybe to copy pages so you have a bigger surface. Uh, but all the elements of the war game as far as the rules and scenarios um, and what you need to play the game uh, are in the book, you know, uh, except for maybe, you know, the dice or a deck of cards or something that is used as a uh, uh, randomizer mechanism. So this is uh, Dreaded Flags, and it's from uh, Volter uh, Schottenton. I'm probably mispronouncing that, so I do apologize uh, up front for any of my mispronunciations. Uh, I make many. Let me have a drink. And uh, But let's get into this. I, I, this, I think, recently came out. This is, hasn't been uh, out uh, in the uh, mainstream that long, I don't think. I saw this uh, listed uh, uh, upcoming release of this on Facebook somewhere, and I said, well, this is something that I need to uh, take a look at. Let's look at the back here. And as you, you can see here, I believe these are your counters. These, these are your ship counters. Uh, uh, you've got some other administrative type counters uh, all along here. And this is a good... I mean, good. I mean, it's it's thicker than regular paper, but it's kind of a cover backing. Uh, if and I think I believe this is where the counters are. I don't know if there's a place to download them. I'll have to look in the book a little bit more. Why don't you all keep your eye out for that as we do a quick page through here? But if that's the case, then um, you know that's that's a little bit of a a, a negative for me because then you're gonna have to cut this here and only have half a back. And you know, I, I don't like defacing uh, things. And so uh, that, uh, but, you know, it is what it is. We'll see. Or you can always make a copy of this. But, I mean, it looked like it's made to use this as your counters. But let's read a little bit on the back here. Uh, in Dreaded Flags, sorry for the glare. In Dreaded Flags, players uh, refight historical naval conflicts between small fleets in the age of piracy. Players take command of one or more ships in battles between privateers, pirates, and or private, uh, pirate hunters. So this is my, uh, uh, I have a ton of pirate games. Uh, most of them are not in the historical or the war game sense. There are a lot of them in the, the hobby or Euro type sense. Um, and uh, I probably should do a, I'm going to start up a playlist on pirates, but I probably should cover those a little bit more. But this is a historical or based on historical. So this definitely is more, war gamey if if there is such a thing uh, dreaded flags uh balances historical accuracy with straightforward and intuitive gameplay the various types of it's hard to read this fire used in the game reflect the risky and perilous nature of combat uh, other error specific factors are also taken into account you will discover firsthand the effect of a good captain and a motivated crew this book contains everything you need to play the game, the rules, eight scenarios, maps, charts, ship's log page, and all the necessary counters. You'll need a five, six-sided dice, optimally two uh, extra colored dice, and a pen and paper at uh, home. There we go. It's hard reading this sometimes. Uh, the book comes with eight scenarios. Depending upon the scenario, the game is played solitaire, two dedicated scenarios, and most other are very middle for, uh, are very suitable for two-handed play or with two or three players. So you got one to three players on this. Most scenarios can be played in one sitting uh, with play time ranging from 30 minutes to about three hours. Scenarios have a complexity rating, rating them uh, from easy to hard. Now, 
hoist the flag and ready the game, it's game time. And you got that one to three players, 30 minutes to three hours, light, medium, and then another better look at some of the counters there. So let's get inside this and just do a little bit of a quick page through on this. Um, there's the correct spelling of the name and my uh, uh, to add to my mispronunciation. So then you've got a, a QR code here to visit it at Board Game Geek to get some of the files. So this is where you can uh, use a resource such as spare ship logs, beautiful map. Uh, I wonder if you can get all, I wonder if they have the counters. That'd be nice so I don't have to cut up the book. So you got a little intro here. A note from the designer. This uh, tells how this uh, how to use this book. I have to say, I mean, it, it's uh, presented very nicely. Uh, dual column, very clear print. Uh, I like how it's organized, and you have these different sections here. This is the rule book section. There'll, there'll be a section for like scenarios and stuff like that. So here is the rule book. Here's your table of contents. So you got 32 pages of rules. Here's the rule styling. So this is an important rule. This is an exception. This is a specification or kind of like maybe an exception or something. And they have a log note. It's nice, got a little bit of an index there, annotation. So here is the ship's log, where you're going to be keeping track of uh, what's going on with the ships. Then we have uh, dreaded, uh, here's an example of the ship's log here. Let's pull this up a little bit. And, it's, and it has some like, I uh, don't know if it's like an old map or something, but there's a, some uh, background filler on the pages there. Let's take a, look, take a look at the ship's log here. So you've got like the morale of the crew is important. Uh, the hull, the crew, the muskets, the rigging, the movement points, uh, number of guns available. You've got a turn track. We keep track of ammo and focus and course and remarks. And you got a little ID counter to keep track of your counter on the uh, on the uh, board. Now, one thing about this is the counters. I think the counters are just ID. So if you wanted to use miniatures uh, or um, I think what was it? Well, there's a miniatures game that came back uh, in the age of Napoleon not too long ago. Uh, age of Sail or something like that. Um, or you can use your own counters, but the board is pretty blue. <laughs> so I think we all have, if, we, if you have any naval games, you probably have some blue boards. Now there might be some terrain or something you might need to, or coastline you might, you might need to put on there. But uh, so this, this is, shouldn't be that hard a game if you wanted to, uh, hard to uh, uh, make your own home version of some of the stuff here uh, to, if, if you didn't want to cut up the book. So here is uh, the wind uh, attitudes, very important in Age of Cell type games. And it shows you your movement, where the wind direction and movement points. And I've, I was always uh, uh, interested in like flying colors and uh, I gotta find that Age of, uh, it was, it was from, made by the same company that did the uh, the, the miniature uh, airplanes, World War One, and then World War Two airplanes, I believe. I have it upstairs, but uh, my game table is crowded today, so I'm uh, I'm filming from the bunker. So you have the weather, very important in selling, setting up the game. Here's your sequence of play: planning phase, movement phase, combat phase, housekeeping. Very simple and clear. As you can see, the rules are not densely packed. They're very clearly labeled. You've got the notes and you've got uh, illustrations and images. I, I like that. I mean, this, this game, it looks like it's really, 
um, walking you through how to play. So here's your planning. Planning repairs, lightning. Here's the movement phase proper. So that was planning, now it's actual movement. Collisions, grappling or ungrappling. Combat phase. Showing you some examples. How to deal with hits. Morale checks. And you have that log where you're going to be keeping track of all this stuff. Here's musket fire. If you're, if you're close enough for that, then boarding, which is a big aspect of pirates. Uh, housekeeping phase, repair attempts, refloat attempts, reload. Wind change, crew focus. I like this aspect how it focuses on the crew and how it's handling uh, different aspects of the crew. Normally, it's, it's the, the crew is just treated kind of as a commodity, but this is, uh, you, you know, they, there's a focus to them. There's morale. Uh, that's going to affect how how well your ship performs based on how the crew's doing. Here's victory, optional rule, advanced hit table. Then we've, that was the rules. So yeah, that we're at page 33 for the rules. Then we have uh, the scenarios. And so you have these little nice little section headings here. So there's a tutorial mission. So you got your setup, you know, how you gotta put the map together. And they had, these maps come in different, you know, page size pieces that you put together. Tells you the wind direction, wind speed, wind change, your pirates, and then your merchants in this case. Looks like it's just uh, two, uh, two ships. Then you've got uh, ooh, Bonnet versus Black Bear. Bonnet versus Black Bear. The Reckoning. And then you have all the setup, and then you have any special rules, and then victory conditions for each of the scenarios, which is typical for modular scenarios. Here's the hunt. Uh, the heist. This is interesting. Oh, Henry Morgan. The sacking. The menace. This is Black Bart Roberts versus Barbados. That one's a little bit more involved scenario there, as you can see. A lot more special kind of rules and then uh, victory condition there. The salvaging. The ambush. These are cool. So I don't, I don't know of a lot of games that are dedicated to, you know, pirates. Uh, there are a lot of, you know, there's a lot of Age of Sail, not a lot, but there's a, a, a fair number of Age of Sail games and some, and, and some you know, like Flying Colors and, and um, I think one was Close Combat or Close Quarters or something like that. Uh, Flying Colors is kind of the mainstay now from, from GMT, but they, they really are focusing more on you know, European battles and, uh, you know, Napoleon, Napoleon War uh, and Napoleonic Wars and, and stuff like that, as opposed to uh, really focusing more on this. So this is, this is interesting to have something for pirates. Then these are the ship's logs. So these are for the different uh, ships, like here's Merchant. You got different names here of the ship. We can keep track of everything. So you want to make copies of this, or it looks like there might be with that QR code at the beginning that you can go on uh, Board Game Geek and get uh, copies of these. These are for the different scenarios. Oh, this, this is for the different scenarios. So this is that was scenario one. This is scenario the reckoning, the hunt. So th these are the ships that are in each of the different scenarios. I assume that you can probably get these off BGG or just make a copy out of the book, whatever is easier for you. A lot of ships in there. Then we have the maps. These are these maps that you need. This tells you how to put them together, but there's a lot of blue in here, right? And I think we all have some blue maps. So 
might not need that. There's another QR code there. Uh, don't want to cut your book? There we go. I don't want to cut my book. Uh, so a lot of these blue maps, uh, we all have blue maps. Well, I shouldn't say all, but a lot of us do. Now, some of these like coast and stuff like that, you'd have to uh, re re replicate uh, that somehow. But you might have some counters or something or, or some overlays you can do. Here's the charts. Please do not share pictures or videos online of the following charts. Okay, so let's, uh, glad I read that. So we'll just look at this kind of, this is all the charts and stuff for the game. So we'll, uh, there you go. We uh, went through that relatively quickly and there's some more in here as well. So these are all the charts and stuff. So all your charts and stuff are gonna be in that section there. There we go, a lot of white pages in here. I'm gonna respect the author's wishes and not uh, show you all the charts because you want to uh, play this game yourself. So there you go, have it. Uh, was there a, a warning like that on the rules? I don't know if there was, but it's my rule book, I bought it. So there you go. Um, a little bit of copyright law there. Uh, there you have it. Dreaded flags, naval conflict in the age of piracy. This looks really nice. I like this. Um, I think this is um, uh, interesting. Uh, I like, you know, you know, I have a fondness for game books. So this fits right into uh, my uh, wheelhouse as far as, you know, nice, portable, um, easy to get into, but yet cover the topic, you know, maybe not as completely or as in detail as a box game. But to be honest with you, looking at the rules here and looking at the scenarios, uh, there are box games that are not as detailed as this or as uh, uh, clear and concise as this appears to be. Um, you know, the downside with, with war game books, uh, the ones that you just write in them or are meant to write in them are usually relatively self-contained. Uh, these books like this that are really taking a war game and putting it in a book and then you have to kind of unpack it out of the book, take a little bit of, of uh, DIY, uh, I mean, do-it-yourself type effect. And so they become a little less portable because by the time you print out all these maps, put these maps together or, and cut out the counters or make up your own counters, uh, and uh, maybe print, uh, maybe make copies of some of those charts to have them as player aids. By the time you do all that, you've you've recreated a a a, a, a whole game that is not contained in the book anymore. So you you have to you have to get a baggie or an envelope. I use like those clear plastic envelopes a lot of times, or have to have some mechanism to you know to put all or get a box <laughs> and put everything. In there, so I mean that, that that's that's the the long and the short of um, of these of, of war game books. You know the ones that are are really truly trying to replicate a war game. By the time you get uh, get done doing that and have a war game, you now have something that needs to go in a box or something like that. But uh, but again, the price on this is not as much as uh, even a magazine game. Magazine games are you know, minimum, uh, you know, at retail, like 40 bucks now, if not more, you know, and that's, that's not including, you know, shipping. Uh, so, you know, this is much more, uh, economical and, uh, you know, but, but you, you know, again, you have to do some of it yourself. So anyway, love to know your thoughts on any of this stuff. Uh, I'm ha thank you for joining me, uh, for coffee. If you're having coffee, awesome. If you're not, that's fine too. Uh, just uh, I'm enjoying your company. Uh, and the best way I know that I enjoyed your company is uh, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about this game or uh, uh, game books or war game books or anything like this. Uh, love to know your thoughts on that uh, and see what um, uh, how this space is developing. It, it Over the last two to three years, uh, this space has always been there. War game books have been out there, but this has really t had a resurgence 
and has gone in a lot of different directions with a lot of different games from from easy and roll and ride and writing the book to full blown you know games like this where you're basically it's a war game in a book that you know you 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 have to extrapolate and then it's a full fledged war game. Um, so the space is really uh, developing at, a, at an interesting uh, pace and an interesting time. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Again, thank you for stopping by. Uh, and take care and enjoy your coffee or whatever you're drinking and the rest of your day. Thanks for watching.